Hey guys, Moan Pober here, and today I'm going to talk about how much should you pay for a small business. Let's get to it. So yeah, people are messaging me, and first of all, thank you very much for everyone who's messaging me. Keep sending me those messages. Um, and yeah, if you want to be involved in this space of buying businesses, you want to potentially partner with me on deals, see in the description below and get in touch. I love getting feedback. Any message, any good feedback is, is great, guys. So even if you send me a message once and you have good things to say about new videos, keep them going. I love them, guys. It, it literally keeps me motivating to do this, these videos for you. Um, so yeah, let, let's get back to it. And, and yeah, if you didn't subscribe yet and you want to hear more about buying businesses, growing businesses, subscribe, like the video, comment below, let me know what you think. But yeah, to, to, let's go back to today's video. So how much should you pay for a small business? So people are getting to me, sending me messages, telling me, hey, Moran, I started talking to business owners. I even um, started getting financials and basic information from those businesses. So what now? How much should I pay for a business? And this is what we're going to expand on. So in a nutshell, there are a few ways to value a business. I, I'm not going to get into all the different ways. I want to keep things as simple as possible so you can go and take action. Um, so again, to keep it in a nutshell, for businesses that we're talking to in this, uh, at least in my channel with uh, those videos, we're talking businesses doing it anywhere between usually one to 20 million a year in sales. So for those businesses, usually what you want to pay is anywhere between, let's say three to six times multiples of EBITDA. In, in EBITDA, their pre-tax profit, basically. So let's say if you put this in, in your context of what to aim for, I think this is a good rule to go with. Don't pay more than five or six times multiples of EBITDA. And even if you pay six, that's like on the high end, make sure you have lots of seller financing involved. So you basically pay uh, more maybe overall, but less as a down payment. So that's, that's a, as a general rule. Now, obviously not all businesses sell for those prices. Uh, there are businesses who sell for much less and those are usually even um, I guess less good businesses or just distressed businesses there's no good fundamentals in those businesses and many times you can get those businesses for uh, one times EBITDA or like I have businesses people come to me and want to give me their business for one dollar literally just to take over and turn around their business and sometimes we, we are willing to do that obviously if we see an opportunity that we can change really quick and some low-hanging fruit options in that business now, obviously there are businesses who sell for more than three to six times multiples. Those are businesses usually with very high growth potential or some kind of unique technology. Um, and you see those crazy multiples mostly with companies who are looking to raise capital. Um, you see that in, in TV shows like Shark Tank and just in general in the VC space. So remember, yeah, the, the three to six times multiples are usually for businesses who grow in a moderate pace, let's say. Um, obviously, it really depends on the size as well. So bigger businesses, businesses doing above 20 million a year, or basically depends on their EBITDA many times, you can pay um, higher multiples. Sometimes you can pay anywhere between six to 12. That's kind of like the numbers I see. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, the three to six, I'm talking usually businesses that grow moderately. And I guess in, in obviously depends on the sectors, but the, the bigger the business, the more revenue it's making, the more profit it's making, the more people will pay for them. Now, the fact that we can buy a business for those small multiples, like for example, if you pay uh, four times multiples on EBITDA, that means you can bring in crazy returns for investors from outside. Those are returns that no one can get in different places. Like if you're investing in, in, pub, in the public market, in public companies, if you're getting eight or 10% a year, you're a genius. In this space, because you're getting such a great return on those low multiples, you can bring your investors crazy returns. For example, if you're paying uh, four times multiples, you can bring 25% in yearly yield for your investors, which is insane. That's 25% a year that you could get nowhere else. Now, if you pay for the business, um, as we suggest, as partially borrowing against the business assets, then the returns for your investors can be even higher. And that's, that, that's insane, guys. People don't have access to those kind of deals. And if you can provide those deals, I mean, you're giving amazing opportunities for investors who are looking to put their money somehow uh, somewhere. And um, yeah, if you want to be involved with our deals and we have tons of deals flow, deal flow in those kind of typical size businesses when we can pay no more than four times multiples. If you just have money and you want to look for good places to invest, then see the description below and we could potentially um, show you some deals as well. 
Now remember, the, 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 those investments are so good because we are investing in businesses that sometimes exist for 10 or 20 years. Maybe they grow slow, but their, 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 their consistent cash flow is something that you can't find anywhere else. That's why it makes it so lucrative for investors who are looking for different opportunities uh, or just more stable opportunities, but can still bring you amazing returns. So now we said overall three to five times multiples on EBITDA as our offer, but how do you decide? Is it two or is it five or six times? So let's get into a few of the things you want to look into to decide how much you want to pay for a business. So to begin with, look at the growth. So if the business EBITDA or pre-tax profit is growing year by year, it means you can pay them more. If there is a decreasing in EBITDA, in their profit, it means you pay less, obviously. So that's the first thing to look at, the growth of the business. The second thing you want to look at is predictability of revenue or profit as well. So, for example, if you can predict with certain contracts or recurring revenue that next year we're going to have X amount of dollars coming in, that means that that business is worth more than a business that is volatile and sometimes you get clients, sometimes you're not and there's just so many ups and downs. So that's the second thing to look at. Just look at the predictability of the revenue and the profit of that business. The next thing you want to look at is the cash flow conversion, which means how much you need to invest constantly in equipment, in inventory and things like that. The more you need to constantly invest in inventory, new inventory, new equipment, it means that the business is worth less than someone who don't have that kind of expenses. Because when you have more cash flow in the business that you can play with versus investing constantly into inventory and managing in that, that purchasing of inventory and equipment, it means that the business Basically, if you don't have those much investments in inventory and equipment, it means the business is worth more. Now, uh, another thing to look at is obviously the size of the business. So basically, you pay more. Uh, the more EBITDA you have, the more you pay, basically, because it's common sense, right? The bigger the business, it means the less risk you have, the more clients you have, the better management team you usually have. And yeah, when, when I say larger companies, yes, obviously, you need to pay more for them. But and I guess they can bring back more EBITDA year by year. But I don't think it means that they're better businesses to have or to look to buy. Maybe obviously to own a big business is awesome, but to look to buy a big business isn't certainly the best thing to do or waste your time on, especially when you just begin, because you have so much competition on those big businesses. You're competing with large private equity firms, with large large trade buyers or big players in those industries, and those type of buyers can usually pay much more and just have access to so much more capital and, and just the fact that they have those synergies and cross-selling opportunities with the potential business means that they can pay much more than someone who is potentially looking for his first or just second deal in the industry. And yeah, when, you, when you're thinking about how much you need to pay for a business, look around, see how much uh, people paid for a similar business in your industry. Start to research online. There are many PR articles about just different acquisitions and, and you won't see maybe in exact details but sometimes you'll see some numbers to give you an idea of how much uh, someone paid for a similar business. Talk to brokers, look for or just talk to similar even if you see a, a PR on someone who bought a specific business then maybe try to call him see how much they paid for his business and try to do a research in your sector to figure out how much you can pay for a business. But remember that in the end, in the end of the day a business is worth what someone is willing to pay for it. So in the end of the day, uh, just go talk to the business owner and figure out what he's expecting to get for that business. You can think that the business is worth five times, but maybe the owner is want to sell the business for two times just because he's very motivated and he just want to exit as soon as possible. So go set the expectations with the owner, figure out what he wants. And based on that, start to make offers. And ideally, when you start to make offers on a business, start low. I mean. Yes, you can pay between three to six maybe overall and in your mind you can say yes, I'm willing to pay five or six, but start lower, um, see what's the expectation from the other side and then through, throughout the negotiation you can always raise your, your price if, if the first or second offer uh, gets rejected. So yeah, that's, that's what I would do if I would talk to business owners or just look for a specific business in a sector. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Obviously, all those different numbers are really also dependent on how much the seller is willing to finance. And we'll talk about that in future videos about seller financing and what's involved and all that. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like the video, subscribe if you didn't yet, comment below, let me know what do you think that the business that you're looking to buy 
is worth. And let me know in the comments why you think that it's worth that way based on the criteria that I gave you. So put, put the thing in the comment below. Oh, and yeah, see the description below. I just created a place for you to post your questions. It's like a survey. I'm asking you a few questions and then you can pretty much tell me what you want me to create videos on. As you can see, I'm pretty much uploading almost daily now. So I need suggestions. So see the description below. Uh, be involved in the survey. Let me know what's your biggest question and I'll, I'll create literally a video uh, personalized for you. So make sure you do it right now in the, in the description below. Um, and yeah, join the Facebook group that we created. There's a business buying uh, Facebook group. Join it right now if you didn't yet. It's great. It's pretty small uh, so far, but it means we have lots of engagement and just really, really interesting people. And I'm really screening people who join in that group. So I'll make sure that you answer a few questions before you join the group so we won't have spam and things like that in the group. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.